Hey everybody, it's time once again for another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes, and if you follow the podcast uh, regularly, you might remember that last summer we talked a little bit about using Amazon Glacier for photo storage. And I want to report back on that today because there's been some progress on that. And I have to first of all give a shout out to my buddy Enrico, who he and I have been emailing back and forth quite a bit since uh, we did that episode. He's a photographer and a developer, and we've both been pretty excited about the possibility of using Amazon Glacier for photo storage. And he's written a really nice extensive blog post on this. I'm going to put a link in the show notes. If you want to go check out what Enrico's done on this and a lot of the stuff I'm showing you today is pretty much what, what he's discovered and what he sent me. Um, anyway, I will link that in the show notes. And if you don't know where the show notes are, if you go to the art of photography.tv, which is our website and look up this episode right under the video, I keep all the show notes and we'll have links to anything we discussed during the show. So anyway, um, but Amazon Glacier, I want to talk about what it is and what it is not. Amazon Glacier, in case you don't know, it is a part of the Amazon developer suite of web services. So it's basically cloud services. It's everything from like, um, you know, web server hosting to storage to, uh, you know, automated backup domain. There's DNS stuff. Anyway, it's a really wonderful suite of things that allow people to do startup businesses that do turnkey solutions just by using the cloud, so to speak. And they really, what's cool about it is they only bill you for what you use. So. <clears throat> Basically, what that means to you as a photographer is this, is if you want to use what they call cold storage, there's, well, if you want to use storage period, they have two solutions. One of them is Amazon S3, which is their simple storage service. And then there's a new one called Glacier, which is what they call cold storage. And basically, cold storage is designed for things that you need to store, but you don't need to access very often. And therefore, the price is way low on it. Uh, so basically, this would be like, you know, businesses that are required to keep certain documents for a number of years. They might need to access them, but probably not. I think as a photographer, there's a lot of stuff that falls into this category when I'm done with a photo shoot or a session. And I I need to hang on to raw files and things like that. I don't want to toss them, but I'm probably not going to access them very often. Um, Glacier is a really good option for that because it's really one cents a gigabyte. So you can get a lot on there and pay a very low monthly rate on it. Now, <clears throat> it's important to know what it is and what it is not. Um, what it is is cold storage, like I've just explained. It's for things you don't need to access very often. In fact, I think there's a penalty if you have to retrieve a file before 90 days. Um, there's a four hour wait time if you do need to retrieve a file. Basically, Basically, they're offsetting it onto older servers, probably. That's my guess. And it's probably tape based storage or something like that. It is redundant, it is backed up, your data is safe, um, but it is just a different beast than just a file locker where you can throw your stuff. That's what something like Flickr would be. Now, Flickr is great, and I think you can use the two in tandem. And I've kind of started doing that, and I'll show you a little of how I'm working that in a second. Uh, but basically, Flickr is great, but it won't let you save raw files and everything is stuck at a JPEG and sRGB and you know there's some limitations to it. It works for about 80 to 90 percent of the stuff that I do and I actually have a second Flickr account that I do archive stuff to. Um, it's not a public account. I've set all the images to be private and I don't mix that with my main account. It's really kind of a dumping ground for things that I might need to get to. Uh, Flickr is very inexpensive too. It's only I believe it's $24.99 US dollars a year and that's pretty cheap for considering it's unlimited file uploads, unlimited you know um, pretty much everything, um, which is really cool. And so if you use the two in tandem, you use naming conventions and you keep your images named and organized correctly, a little bit of work involved with that, but you can get a solution that's very redundant, it's backed up and your photos stay safe. They're much better than just throwing them onto a computer, onto a hard drive and waiting for that to fail one day or trying to run a server out of your home. And uh, Enrico has talked a lot about this in his blog post because he's done this, has run servers at home and backed things up into the cloud. And, and uh, anyway, uh, for less than the power it would take to run a server in electricity a year, you can store a lot of data. But anyway, come on over to the computer and I want to show you kind of how Amazon Glacier works and how you access it and how you control it. Okay, so let's dive into this Amazon Glacier business here. Um, this right here is the blog post that Enrico wrote that I'm talking about. I could read this. Um, I'm going to link to it in the show notes. It's really important, I think, because he goes through all, he, first of all, he's had experience with lots of different ways of backing up and storing things uh, all the way from NAS servers to whatever. And I think he's made some good points in here and he knows what he's talking about. He's a good guy. Um, and check this out. A lot of the information is, that I'm talking about here today is based on what's in here. So I'm going to link that up in the show notes. Um, his blog is the graybloglogspot.com dot com and there's a lot of good stuff there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to leverage S3 to work with the Glacier here. And uh, if you go into the Amazon Web Services homepage here, which is aws.amazon.com, you will need to sign up for an account and go through all that rigmarole because they will bill you monthly. But uh, the stuff is cheap and we're going to learn how to use it here. Okay, so here's a list of all the Amazon Web Services that are being offered. There's a lot of wonderful stuff. We're going to be dealing with S3. Now, there is a Glacier link here too, but we're not going to 
do Glacier like this. We're gonna we're gonna assign it from S3. I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, so if you click on S3, this is how S3 works. If you don't know, uh, S3 works with a series of what they call buckets, and a bucket is kind of like a folder. And in fact, you can create buckets and access them from an FTP application. And this is the one I like. It's called Transmit. Unfortunately, it's a Mac only app uh, made by Panic Software. It is the best out there. Uh, there are some good Windows apps as well, but you want something where you can probably drag and drop and and manage files that way. You can also do it through the web browser with Amazon, but I really prefer to do it this way. I, I don't really touch the other side. So anyway, we've set up, um, you can see there's a little window and this is uh, archive test 2012, which I actually made earlier. And I threw some um, CR2 files in here camera raw and these are ones that I want to archive and so if I go let's look at them from the web browser side too so if I go to this archive test 2012 you can see them listed here as well now what's going to happen here and I'm sorry it hadn't thrown it over yet but um, you're going to see uh, this list of files there's name storage class size and last modified well this looks like something you'd see on your computer for the most part except this thing called storage class which is um, kind of a proprietary to Amazon kind of thing and they deal with these in S3 and they have now created a storage class called Glacier and this folder is actually timed so later this afternoon these will all turn into Glacier class storage they will be in the Glacier and you probably won't want to get to them very often because they charge you for retrievals if it's over a certain percentage and I think before 90 days but anyway this is a really good way of cold storing a lot of files and it's like I said it's a penny a gigabyte so you know you can't complain there if you need to restore something once it's in a glacier class you can select it in here and you can you can request a restore on a file and uh, it will come back to the real world and out of the glacier and you can access it again so anyway once again it's really important to remember that glacier is not for stuff you need to get to all the time and as you can see there's no metadata that I have associated with these there's no thumbnail no nothing so you're gonna need to be fairly organized about this which I think is pretty important which is why let me go over to Chrome here I keep a second Flickr account and I keep my files in here and I keep the file names so you can see like for instance here is uh, uh, underscore MG underscore nine five six nine which is this photo of the church and if I go over to the glacier there it is nine five six nine right there so I, I keep the Flickr side of it because then I can do my metadata and my, my tagging and all that stuff this is not my main Flickr account this is um, you know a second one that I use plus it stores really big files so I can go in here and retrieve a large size JPEG which is probably what I would do more often than needing to access the original camera raw anyway so it works really well um, one other thing I want to show you let's talk about how to set one of these things up if you're in Amazon so what we're gonna do is let's go back out to my list of buckets and we're gonna create a bucket and we'll just give this a name and I'll just say um, you know my photo archive and let's see if we can and now say create it's going to set up there's my photo archive now what I'm going to do is let's select that and go under actions I'm sorry and say properties and we have my photo archive which is this last one selected and there's a number of things I can do with properties and there's permissions in here uh, for the files that are in there I actually want to go down to life cycle and this is how you throw stuff in the glacier what we're going to do as I close it we're going to say add rule and this is under lifecycle rule. You can name it if you want. Uh, I'm going to apply it to the entire bucket. So everything in this entire bucket is going to go down like this. And you can mess with prefix and there's other things you can do too. And read Enrico's article because he talks about that. What we're going to do is add a transition. And we're going to add a transition to Glacier. And unfortunately, the shortest amount of time they'll allow is one day. So we're going to say basically for everything that gets put in this folder, within one day of putting it in that folder, transition it to Glacier. Say save. It's going to say, hey, look, you know, explain what's going on you say save and you're done now from now on anything that via FTP I don't even have to think about it I can set this up and let's refresh this list so I can see my photo archive there it is so anything I put into this folder now it has basically an expiration where it's going to go into the glacier after one day you could set that for longer if you want to which might be kind of handy if you know you're gonna go throw files in there and you may need to access them in the next month but if you're not gonna do them in a month you're not gonna do them so you could save 30 days on there or something like that but anyway that's basically how you use the glacier and uh, it's pretty exciting and I think it presents some really cheap photo storage for a lot of photography application not all of it um, unfortunately like I said remember this is cold storage so it's, it, don't put things in here you're gonna need to get to next week this is for stuff that really needs to be offloaded and just stored that you want to get to probably someday but uh, not for a while anyway thanks everybody for watching once again this has been the art of photography and I'll see you guys next time